Welcome to A Cloud of Witnesses. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to share the prayer that births revival with insights from Evan Roberts. I can't think of a better person to look to. He was a man, of course, that was critical in the birthing of the Welsh revival of 1904 and 1905. And he inspired many other revivals, including the Azusa revival. He was a man known to be a person of great prayer. And as we look at his life, we'll discover so many keys, first in the character and lifestyle that put him in a place to be effective in prayer. And then the things that brought him to a place of birthing the revival. So let's look and let the Holy Ghost open our eyes to see and ears to hear so that we would have a now word, God, what you want us to do to birth the revival on the earth that you desire. We want to be in tune with you. We want to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing by the Holy Ghost, Father God, so that Jesus is glorified. And I cover this message with the blood, and I thank you for divine impact and influence, for lives to be touched, provoked, and changed by the Holy Ghost, Father, so that we would get a burden for the heart of heaven. Thank you, Father. And I want to start with that there must come a place where we consecrate our lives. He had to live a life of consecration. The Word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 17, it says, Therefore come out from them and, I, and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. We want to be in a place where God receives us when we pray, where there's impact when we pray, because I want to walk with authority when I pray. So much is at stake. I'm tired of playing the game of prayer, where we pray little things, and if they happen, great. We're just walking in hope that maybe we're playing the lottery. I'm tired of that. God expects us to, answer, to, to come and pray, and He delights in answering prayer. God wants to answer our prayer. He is a good Father, a good God. But we've got to learn to come and walk right, separated from the world. And that word separate means to put boundaries up, that we will not cross them or do certain things like the world does. But we walk a different lifestyle. And we see that in Evan Roberts, even from an early age, where people around him would not curse or swear and do certain things. They recognized something about the man. And we want to walk the same, that there's something different. We're not rude or arrogant. We're not obnoxious. People don't want, just don't want to be around us. They should be drawn to us. There should be something about us. But at the same time, there should be a holy fear because we walk in a holy fear of offending the Lord. And so that was inside of him, and it caused a burden in him. He spent time studying the revivals of the past, and when you do so, faith begins to rise. And so when he read the Word, he started to see in the Word the message of revival. And he had a burden, even from an early age, that God would raise somebody up and that there would be a revival in his city and in his nation. Do we carry that burden? Do we, we have that burden throughout our lives. God, I want to see revival in my nation. I look at revival, and I think it's so important we study the revivals of the past, and we get the fire of that revival burning inside of us. God, what you've done in a previous generation, would you do in ours? Will you do it again? And that was in him, and a consequence was he wanted to walk a life separated, holy unto God, which leads to the next point, and it was a life of faithfulness. He was told once, remember, remember to be faithful. What if the Spirit were to come down and you were absent? I want to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing when the Spirit of God moves. I want to be in flow with the Holy Ghost. How do I stay in the right place at the right time? Being faithful, faithful in prayer. We've got to realize it's not where you were yesterday, but where are you today with the Lord? 
Are you doing the right things? Are you being faithful to the voice? For those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I want to be flowing with Him and doing the things of God. Faithful in church, faithful to the Word, and faithful in prayer. I don't care my prayer yesterday. God, I spent so much time with you yesterday. Where are you today? It's got to grow and increase. And you see that in Evan Roberts, the burden continued to grow. That it impacted his whole life. It impacted the way he acted and thought because this thing of faithfulness. Because he said, I will have the Spirit. Do you have that in you? I will have this revival. I will have the Holy Ghost. I will have this Father God. I'm going after it with everything I've got. It means everything. This is the gold and treasure that I desire. This is where my heart is set. And seeing the Holy Ghost, are you at that place? And God, would you open our eyes to see Him bring us to that place of burden for you and the things of God. And that brought Him to understanding things from a heavenly perspective. You don't see things from the earthly realm, but from heavenly realm. Remember the word says we're seated with him in heavenly places. Well, during an experience once where there was an explosion in the mine, Evan Roberts was almost killed. Of course, the enemy always wants to take you out but his Bible protected him and saved him. And they got him out, but they were not able to get the Bible. Well, once things had settled, Evan Roberts went back to get it, and he had to crawl to get the Bible. And he said something that was profound. He said, I had to go on my knees to get hold of the truth. You cannot get the word until you've spent time in real prayer. And all of a sudden, God opened your eyes so that you're seeing the word as something living that's a two-edged sword changing you. Revealing things. I'm tired of people writing their opinions. I'm more interested in the opinion of heaven than mine or somebody else's. Go to the Word. I don't, well, it doesn't look like, I don't care what it looks like. What does the Word say? The Word must become absolute authority and the standard of truth by which we walk. The Word. If you're going to see revival, then the Word must be the foundation on which you stand. Hearing and doing the Word. Now, this brings us to the place, when we've done all this, to the place where we can pray the prayer that births revival. And he came and he would spend time every night in prayer. And one night he's praying and he said, While on my knees, I was caught up into space, without time or place, communing with God. And then he then went on to say, Before then, I had only a God on a, at a distance. Too many of us are praying prayers and we know God at a distance. He's got to become here, now, and real to you. You've got to get past the veil of your flesh. You've got to come to the place where you seek his face and you find it. The word said, seek my face. So seek it until you find because if you knock and you keep knocking, guess what? The door will be opened. If you seek and keep seeking, you will find. There's got to be a place of pressing in through faithfulness and preservation. Or preservation. Now, I want to share something. Many people write and say, Jesus said, Regarding when he returned, will I find faith on the earth? Let us get that thing in context. Because he talked, Jesus was talking about prayer, and he gives a story about this woman and an unrighteous judge. And this woman is seeking justice, but the judge won't listen to her. She keeps going after him, and he won't listen. But she doesn't stop. She keeps pestering him day and night, seeking justice, because she believes in her case. She needs this justice. It was something of critical importance, so she won't stop. And finally, the judge comes and says, she'll wear me out, so I will give her what she wants. And then the Lord says that will not the Heavenly Father do more speedily for His people? Then, talking about return in the context of that, will I find such faith on earth? 
a faith that refuses to quit, a faith of pressing in, a faith of persistence. Because God, so much is at stake, I cannot quit. That sums up Evan Roberts. He never quit. And he found a place where he went deep in prayer. And then he knew. The night before the revival broke out, they just had a service. It was good. And then he has another service and nobody turns up. His mother's there, a few people. It is midnight and his mother says, it's all over. It's a work day. It's all over. Quit. And Evan Roberts said, no, the Holy Spirit is closer now than ever. He could sense it because you know when you're in the place of his presence. And he said once, to practice of the presence of God. You know, when he went to Bible school, one of his biggest concerns in going to Bible school to learn about the Lord was he would lose the time to spend in the presence of God. Are you concerned about things that distract and take you from time in the presence of God? Because you need to spend time so that you know, I know his thought, I know his heart, I know his thinking, and I can look him in the eye and ask him and know that he's heard and know that I will receive. And you get to know the seasons and the times of God and you be changed and transformed. God begins to work on you. He begins to tell you things and expose things in your life that you need to change and put right. Because revival is starting in you. You are starting to awaken in the presence of God. You cannot help but awaken in the presence of God. Because revival is where God comes closer. And when God turns up, everything changes. And He must turn up in your life, in your prayer life, by having this place where you go deep and you commune. And He's no longer far off, but He's here now and real. And now you have an effective prayer because you're talking right to Him. You are standing and you have met him face to face. And you know what? They, they said in the Old Testament, I've met God and I have not died. You do die. I want to tell you something. You will die. The old man must die in the presence of God. He cannot go beyond that veil and come to the Holy of Holies to stand in the all awesome presence of God. And that's the call. And that will bring you to this next step. Something very incredible. No, there's nothing for me to do but to wait. You know, you get this confidence in the presence of God where I am clean. And now it's the time of waiting because God has set times. God has set times when he will do, he remembers, and he acts. And we need to be in tune and know when the set time has come. And he said, all for me to do right now is to wait for the fire to descend. The altar is ready, the wood upon it, and the sacrifice ready, only waiting for the fire to descend. And then he kept saying and praying, bend me. And he turns up at the service and he doesn't want to go in, but he finally goes in and they're praying and he begins to burst. There's something on the inside. He was pregnant with something because you're in the presence of God. You get pregnant with the vision and purpose of God and it gets bigger in you until the place where he wants to come out of you and he's bursting. When can I have my opportunity to pray? And then it, all of a sudden he hears something. And I want to quote this um, from what the Welsh said because I've always quoted this based on what they translate it. But a stronger translation is, it was God singing the praises of his love. He hears God singing the praises of his love to him and it bends him. It breaks him. The love of God breaks him. He spent time in the presence and it so softened him. It has so tenderized him. And then God comes up singing the praises of his love and it hits him like a railroad train and it breaks him. And all of a sudden there's a breaking forth of what God had put in him. And the love 
now would flow from because what he would do would be out of the love of God that wrecked him in the presence of God. And he gets the opportunity to pray. The love of God commends us. He gets, there's this love and it begins to pour out of him that would change lives. That's where we must come. Wrecked and broken by, so get in the presence of God until you come to that season where you're softened and all of a sudden the time comes, the set time, and the sacrifice is ready, the wood is on the altar, we're just waiting for the fire and you're pressing in, holding the horns of that altar saying, God, when? I'm worshiping you. I'm loving you. I know you, my God. You cannot, you will not fail. And then the fire falls and the fire is the love of God coming forth in such great power that it breaks us, wrecks us, and causes us to go. Because when it's loosed in an unbelieving world, it convicts them of the sin and shows that, they're, that what they're being, where they truly are at, their unworthiness. But then it shows them how precious they are before the Lord God and what Jesus did, and it compels them to come. Amen. Oh, that we be broken and wrecked by the love of God by going deep and spending time like Evan Roberts, this continual going deep in the presence of God and spending time every night communing with you, God, getting closer to know you and be known by you, changed and transformed by you, and let that fire never go. Let us stay there. Amen. Well, I pray that you're blessed and encouraged, and I ask of you to subscribe, but I also ask you to check us out on Facebook and join us in praying daily for revival and in fasting at least once a month. Now is the time. Now is the season. Let the church gather and let us pray and let us see the purpose of heaven loosed on the earth. Amen. Well, thank you and be blessed in the name of Jesus.